Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, uh, continuing on with our Capture One series. And uh, a little bit of a cold here today, so the, the voice isn't as good as it normally is, but hopefully it's understandable. I'm going to slow down a bit. Uh, everyone kept telling me I was talking too fast. Uh, it's that Wisconsin in me. We're a little bit uh, speedy around here. Uh, so I want to talk about culling, and this is a big part of photographers' lives. Even if you're someone who doesn't spend a lot of time in retouching, you still spend a lot of time in sorting. And uh, Adobe last year really had to kind of pick up the ball because Lightroom got to be so slow that everyone was, was rebelling against the product. And uh, Capture One has always been pretty fast in this area, uh, and it's very flexible. But it is a little on the confusing side because of the sheer number of tools that are available. Uh, now, just like, just like the color aspects of this and other previous videos, there are a lot of tools you can choose to ignore or use depending on what strategy you would like. And there's no really wrong or right way to do this. You just simply implement the tools in the way that you feel you would like. And I'm going to talk about the way that I use culling uh, because I've been using this product for a great many years. I have also been uh, a big fan of the Adobe product uh, because of some of the weaknesses in this product that have since recently been shorn up in the last few versions. So I want to talk about kind of a transition. If you're moving from Lightroom to Capture One, uh, what are some of the things to expect? What are some of the major differences you're going to run into? Uh, pluses and minuses. Um, but for the most part, I think you'll find that Capture One is a, a far superior product to Lightroom when it comes to culling, sorting, and kind of organizing your life. That being said, let's start off with, uh, rather than kind of look at the product here first, let's talk about the difference between a session and a catalog. There are two different mechanisms inside of Capture One. There's a session and a catalog. So the catalog is the same thing you have in Lightroom. It's a big database. It contains all of your images or references to images located on the hard drive. And a Lightroom works that exact same way. If you lose that catalog, all of your, your references, all of your, your scores, your colors, your mechanisms for organizing are lost. Your catalog is really a dependent database for your entire system. Now a session is Capture One's original method of organizing things. And I much prefer this. Now, my initial reaction was stick with the catalog because I'm coming from Lightroom as a catalog, therefore I need a catalog. I find catalogs really only are superior to sessions if you're a person who shoots pretty much the same thing constantly. Meaning if you're a flower photographer, for example, or a food photographer who doesn't so much have clients, but you're shooting the same thing day in, day out. If you have different clients, if you're like a high school senior photographer, food photographer, landscape photographer, moving from project to project or uh, client to client. Anytime you have clients involved, you're pretty much going to want to use sessions. So sessions are islands on themselves. And I'll show you what a session looks like on a hard drive. And you can get to it, by the way, uh, simply by clicking right click here and choosing show an explorer. That uh, brought that up over here for me. And that's what this looks like. So don't mind all the garbage over here. <clears throat> but you have a capture folder, an output folder, a selects folder, a, another file, and then there's another one that's called trash. And I've removed trash because all of my projects use the same trash bin. I don't have an individual trash bin per project. So what's cool about this is that you have an island of images. So um, we dump everything we're shooting into the capture folder, and then after we cull it, all the ones that we really like are moved into the selects folder. And then as we create the project, uh, Photoshop documents, tips, and so on, and moves them in the output folder. And all of this is controlled by this tiny little database folder. And this is only a database of values. All these things stay on the hard drive. So it is not a magical container containing our images. We can't get at it. It is simply a pointer to the live hard drive. So if you change the hard drive, the next time you open the project, the project will be different. Now, before you go, oh my God, I really don't like this. I, I would much prefer to use the way the Lightroom does it. I'll tell you, there's a great thing about this that I hadn't really considered when I first moved from uh, catalogs to sessions, and now I'm seeing the beauty behind it. And that's if you shoot a lot, like I do. Sometimes I'll have two or three sessions in a day, and you're busy for weeks on end, especially high school senior seasons or families or doing fashion or whatever it is that you're doing, or commercial work. I do a lot of commercial work. Your hard drive starts to fill up, and I've got multiple... Uh, raid arrays, I have all this mass storage, and I'm keeping everything. Well, at some point, you got to start to let something go. What are you going to let go of? And really, the answer is right here. This capture folder contains everything that the client didn't see, ultimately, because I moved all that to the selects folder. 
So everything that's left in this capture folder is really discard eligible. I can delete that whole capture folder. In fact, when I'm talking about pushing my stuff up to the cloud, the capture folder is, is excluded from that push. Because if it isn't in the selects folder, chances are I'm not going to want it. Now, I am a little forgiving when I do my selects because I'm like, mm, I'm not sure if I want that file or not. I know that if I don't pick it, at some point it will be purged. And it's just a matter of time. Uh, and then maybe three years down the road or two years down the road, whenever the drive starts to fill and I say, I need to sacrifice space, this client is a, it's a long closed project. What can I let go? I'm going to let go of the capture folder. Now, the selects folder would then be the next one to go. And the selects folders are typically backed up on other media. So they'd be on a DVD drive or, or a Blu-ray or some other sort of a mechanism. Um, I have a couple of different archive hard drives. And I, I discussed my backup me methodology in a video well, almost a couple of years ago, actually. And it hasn't changed much, although I've changed my cloud provider since then. So maybe I need to redo that video. Uh, but uh, in general, these two files are my most important folders. The output folder contains the retouched Photoshop or TIFF documents. Those are gold. And then the selects folder are everything else that did not get retouched. That is, you know, the client might come back and say, hey, we're looking at this image. We didn't think we wanted it before, but now we do. Now, I do charge a fee for them to, for me to go back to the archive to pull it out. Uh, so that's a little bit of a pain in the ass factor thrown into the way that I do my pricing. But in general, the output folder is the, the king to me. It does not contain the JPEGs like you think output, like he's outputting a full-size JPEG, he's outputting a social media copy or things like that. I actually push those all out to my Dropbox and, and the clients can access the files that they've paid for in the Dropbox there or the social media versions that I'm giving away. Things like that all live inside the Dropbox and those can be destroyed. So anytime I need to purge my Dropbox, I can destroy them because I can always go back into output here and re-export the sizes that the client would like for deliverable. So I kind of wanted to talk about that a bit because as I discuss this in here, you're going to be like, well, why don't you just put it all in a catalog? Because I have no way to really purge the catalog bit by bit. Plus, every year you pretty much have to start a new catalog because the catalog is going to get slow. Lightroom is notorious for breaking down about 30 to 40,000 images. It doesn't like to work very fast after that. And Capture One is probably about the same, although Capture One's, you know, its catalog is fairly new. Um, and I'm not, again, I don't really use it, so I can't really speak as an expert to that. But I'll tell you what, Sessions offer so much more flexibility. Plus, if you just click on the little file I had shown earlier, that little database file that lives in there, it opens your, cap your Capture One session. So if you grab that in some files and hit the road, you can work on your stuff remotely that way. I mean, there's nothing, nothing else to take with you. Anyway, so that being said, let's start by talking about the capture folder. So this is a shoot I had this weekend, and um, these are the RAWs, and I have kind of culled them a bit, but I kind of wanted to show that process. So the first thing I would do is I would go through and I want to say, are they in focus? Now, normally I have to open each one. Let me show you a couple of tips uh, or tricks around getting around that. So up in capture one, uh, there's a thing called the focus mask here, show focus mask. If it's not there, you can right click and choose customize and you can grab it from in here and you can drag it up into the uh, toolbar. So when you click on that, it's gonna create a green mask around every image on the screen that will show everything that's in focus. So quickly I can see if something is completely wrong, I'll know it right away. And it looks like most of these have pretty good focus. This one might not be, oh no, it's got another cheat too. But from this distance, it's still kind of hard to see, but this is a really good way to eliminate the obviously out of focus ones. Now, if I don't like that method, I have another way to do this. And that is I can hold down control and space bar, and this works in every part of the product. And it will show me a full size view at 100% of the area over the image I'm hovering over. And it works over every image. So I can just move from image to image, even if it's not selected and pick the one that I would like and it will bring it up. There we go. So I can move around and it will show me the 100% preview. Now, if I do want to work on the file, I want to see it whole and completely, I can just double click on it. Um, that will move the, the browser over to the side, then I can look at the image itself. So from here, I can, again, I can control space bar to, to zoom in. Uh, by the way, you can adjust all the options for this uh, by going up under the loop here, which is what this is called. And you can choose the size of the loop, mine is set to medium, and how much you want the zoom of the loop to work, and mine's 100%. And then it uses the centered loop. So 
Uh, I, I love this. I think it's a really cool way. Uh, and you don't have to leave any tool or you can be in the middle of something. It's just control space bar and you have your loop and it works everywhere on the page, uh, everywhere on the image. And it's fast. I mean, there's no real loading time at all. And you can zoom again over your, your ones on the side here. So once I've done that, I can go ahead and I can pick my colors. I can give it a star rating. Um, and there's a lot more colors in Capture One than there are in Lightroom. I think uh, Lightroom offers five, and I think there are seven here. Yeah, and uh, and none. And, and none's important because uh, in my the way that I work my system is a red is something that I want to retouch. I know I'm going to want it, even if the client doesn't want it. It's an image I want for my portfolio. Um, blue means that it is complete. The the product has been shipped. The the product is done. This was the original raw of it, and the purple is the final JPEG or TIFF or not JPEG, uh, Photoshop document or TIFF. Uh, JPEGs are not uh, things I keep in my catalog or my my sessions at all. They're they're completely fictitious. They can be thrown away at any time. They're completely discardable because anytime I want them, I can just re-output them. So keep that in mind that I don't keep JPEGs in here. They're they're just something I can create whenever I want it. Now, let's say I have three images that I want to compare. Um, you can just hold down your control key and you can bring up the three images that you would like and, and you can look at them. Uh, you can get rid of pieces of the interface here too. Uh, control T uh, will get rid of the toolbar. Control B will get rid of the browser on the side. Uh, so you can maximize your workspace. Um, I don't tend to, to, to feel that I'm too cramped, although I do sometimes get rid of the browser. Um, if you would like, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll uh, to scroll in and it will center over whatever part of the image uh, that you're scrolling. So um, just back out and recenter if there's something. Uh, you can also hold down the space bar like you can in Photoshop and you can recenter the object or whatever you need to do to get it exactly where you want it. So that's some quick methods for kind of looking at your images and giving them a bit of a score. But you know, like in Lightroom, you would hit the, well, I used the, the pick, the P key, the X key would delete them, and the U key was I was undecided. Um, in here, there is no P pick. Um, if you pick it, you basically move it to the selects folder, and that's what I have done. I changed my shortcut. Uh, that's this button here. Move all selected grains to selects folder. Uh, so that's my P key, and that will move all of them to this folder. So in the selects folder are all the images that are final from the shoot that I like. And um, you see there's a bunch of different models from the day. Uh, these are the images that I decided I want. And these are still raw, unretouched images that need cropping and color toning and all that other jazz. But I like them as they came out of the box. And uh, so you can change the, um, the way that the screen is laid out. There's a grid mode. There's um, a useless list mode. <laughs> there's the, the film strip mode, which I also find annoying. Uh, and you can dock this along the bottom of the screen, too. There's a lot of ways that um, you can put the, the browser below, for example. So if you're a Lightroom person and you much prefer this method, go ahead. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just simply move it around to uh, whatever you like. So there's that. And uh, there are uh, your ability to scale your, your thumbnails and, and make them bigger or the, or the image itself. The, uh, you can search down here. Uh, that's also very handy. Um, you can also use a common delimited uh, amount of search. That's handy if a client has selected, say, 10 or 15 images and put the file names in an email from you. You can actually go up and uh, select them, select the collection. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, select by file name list, and you can give the list and separate it by new lines or commas or, or semicolons or spaces or whatever. Um, if your person uses like in-person sales software like Enview, uh, that will also allow you to export the list of common delimited file names, which you could then do here. And I believe Lightroom offers that now as well. Uh, but that's uh, that's one way that I that I kind of organize myself for culling things. Then I color them, I give them uh, star ratings, and then there's other options down here too for finding, say, for example, the TIFF or the RAWs. Uh, I'm a Sony user now, so there's that by Nikon. And uh, by dates uh, of this, this collection contains, contains images that were shot on these dates and have these keywords. And then whether or not I've processed it or not, which is pretty cool. Um, so I can go through and say whether or not this is an image that has gone through the batch processing 
um, for exporting. So I know that if I've touched it or not, because sometimes you do something with an image and you don't mark it. And you're like, okay, I can't find it. It, I know it's been processed. It will be somewhere in that. Um, so there's all these other filters over here are pretty standard. And again, they're just like every other parts of Capture One. You can pull them out. You can redock them. You can add other ones. You can add the same one multiple times. I mean, you can really confuse the hell out of this entire interface over here. And when we get to um, process recipes, which we'll do another day, because that is awesome. I mean, it is a beast. People look at it and they run for the hills. They're scared of it. It is so powerful, but so time saving. Once you get your recipes down, it's epic. So I will get that done at some point and get you that video so you understand how to do it. So the output location would contain all my TIFFs and my Photoshop documents and so on. And then trash, as I said, is actually tied to another, another place. So anytime you're working in um, inside of Capture One and you wanted to say, for instance, something isn't hooked up right, you can also right click on it. And, uh, and inside of Capture One, hang on a second, you'll say Capture One and then you can mark it as your uh, output folder trash or favorites folder. Now favorites folder means that it will be attached here under session favorites. It's not part of the session, but it's a folder you keep referencing when you're working with this. Uh, that's handy for if you're uh, doing a lot of compositing, for example, and you have a lot of backgrounds or set pieces, plates and other things that you want to use, then you can add those here. Um, I also like the fact that I can create different albums here. Um, for different people. So if I'm shooting a, a doctor's office and I have all the different doctors, I can create a session favorite for each doctor, or I could create a separate album for each doctor, uh, and they can put them all in the capture folder just like I would want them to. Uh, the session albums work the same way as Lightroom does. You have the ability to make smart ones and just standard ones. Uh, the smart ones have the ability to uh, have all these fancy rules um, by any, basically anything. And there are a lot more in here than there are in Lightroom. A lot more. You can search by seriously anything that has to do with this picture, all the way down to the nitty gritty of the camera, serial number, and so on, and then create rules that stack to say if it meets this criteria, uh, then go ahead and put it in this folder. And it will keep that folder up to date constantly. And you create presets for that as well. Um, I'm not going to dive deep into those unless you guys want to see a video on that kind of thing, um, but I'd be happy to do so. So this kind of gives you an idea of how I use Capture One for for culling. Um, as we go into the next step when we talk about retouching to, we'll get into annotation. So annotations allow you to draw on the image here with a little crayon. You know, say, well, say you know, bring, dodge this down here, um, bring up this here, um, you know, whatever you're going to do retouch wise to the image. And then when it loads it into Photoshop, it'll come in as a separate layer that you can turn on and off. So you can see, oh, this is this is the tasks that I have decided I wanted to do when I was looking through the library here. Uh, so you don't have to remember later and you can take those 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 notes as you're culling to say, you know, borrow the head from this person and put it on this person over here because I like the body better. Whatever you're doing, you can go ahead and make those notes at that time. Um, I rarely does an image not go to Photoshop for me. They, they have to go there for, for different reasons, but every image pretty much has to go to Photoshop, which means we're going to end up with a, a, a very large group of TIFF files at the end of the day, and I have to make sure that I have the hard drive space to maintain those over the course of many, many years. So keep in mind that over a catalog, a session is a lot more easy to grasp, but catalog is kind of the same idea. You can still use the same tools, you can do all the same stuff, but you have to resync the hard drive. You have to you know, resync those folders just like you do in Lightroom. If you make any changes there, you have to make that those changes with the synchronization, and you have to kind of babysit it. And I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I much prefer this the session uh, method, plus they're portable. You know, there's nothing that says I can't pick it up and use it on the road. And then when I bring it back, I just copy the stuff that's in my output folder back into the uh, Capture One output folder. And there's nothing else I need. Remember that the, the Capture One session object really doesn't contain much um, that, I, that I need. You know, all these, these ratings and so on are actually stored in the XMP sidecar file of the image. And you could change that through your preferences, but I don't know why you would have it any other way. Uh, so if there are any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you are wanting to get a Capture One uh, license, let's say you're using the Sony version or the Fuji version, or you're just looking to get into it, um, I do offer a discount code um, because I am a Capture One ambassador now. So if you are interested in that, it just gives you a percentage off of the product and any of the packs they have, the style packs. Um, doesn't really do anything else. So if you're looking to save some money and use the product, 
uh, by, you know, feel free to use the code and I'll uh, put it uh, down below so you guys can grab it if you need it. Uh, but give me some comments on what you would like to see next in this video series. Remember, this is a, a commercial level product. This was targeted to professional photographers long before Lightroom even existed. This product has been around and it helps people who are shooting for commercial clients. So organizing yourself, outputting files that, that contain information and putting them into a myriad of different directories is exactly what this product is built for. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop them below. I appreciate it greatly if you'd hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, rare, rarely do people take the time to do that and it means a lot to me. And obviously subscribe if you'd like to see more content. Until next time, uh, get out there and get shooting.